Your Jimmy Gang, Jimmy Gang, Jimmy Gang, the Army, the Navy, the Unstoppable. Welcome back, man. Listen, today we got a video from Cartoon News Network that we reacting to. Shout out to Cartoon Toon News Network and shout out to Trenches News too. But today we getting into a little documentary. I guess it's about Trenches News. It's going to tell its history and all that. You know what I'm saying? We're going to see if there's any mystery in Trenches News history. But now I rock with Trenches News though. I be seeing them on the interviews and all that. I do think it's a little weird for you to be a YouTuber and wear a mask. Like, you bought all the camera equipment, all of that, the setup and everything to put a mask on over your face. It's a little weird. I definitely do want to find out more about you and learn what's going on. Because that's a little weird. So let's get right to it, man. Shout out to Trenches News. Like I said, though, this ain't no shade, but I'm going to watch it. And y'all going to watch it with me. We're going to react. Y'all going to react in the comments. Jimmy Gang, what up? Oh, before we get into it, though, let me know how y'all feel about the mask YouTuber thing, like I think that's cool. Like, how y'all how feel about that? There's this one YouTuber named Hello Usain. Hello Usain. He went on No Jumper or something like that with a mask on. That shit threw me off. Like, you be talking, having all type of opinions, but then it comes to time to show your face on a major platform and you come on with a mask. Shit is weird. Let's go. Martel Wiley, also known as Trenches News, or Damn, started off with his government name. If anybody, if anybody ever decided to do one of these on me. Like, please don't say my real name. Like, please just say all my AKAs, all my handles. But don't start off with Lawrence. Da, da, da. Like, come on, we don't need all that. Snitches News, as we'll call him on the show. Nigga says Snitches News. There is rumors that he ratted, though. I heard he came out himself and said, yeah, me and um, me and FBG butter both told. Like, I don't know if that's true. Y'all tell me in the comments. Was born on May 7th, 1984. This is the Cartoon News Network. 1984. How would that make that nigga? How would that make son? Born on May 7th, 1984. Let me see. What's that? Hold on. My calculator. That make the nigga like 40, right? He like 40. Right? This is the Cartoon News Network's Feature presentation, Ratatouille, the life story of Snitches News. Martel Wiley no longer claims any gang affiliation, but he was a black disciple from the Madden Park homes representing New... So he was one of the guys. He was a BD. In 2006 or 2007, he moved to Parkway Gardens until the new town BD started beefing with their former allies, the BDs from Wick City. In 2010, he was known as a scammer and a thief, so people called him Swiper. His people moved to Jaro City before the war with their allies from STL, EBT, and O Block really kicked off in 2011. Bro, you ain't even had to have this cartoon nigga on the side right here. Like, you ain't even had to have this cartoon nigga on the side. You, like, making him talk and all that. This to my fault. This right here to the nigga who made the video. Bro, people don't care about that, bro. You could have just played the video with these pictures and all of that. If you don't want to put your face on screen, like, you could have just, you don't have to do the cartoon thing where you got a nigga that. If you want to do that, that's cool, but I know how much editing that take to make his mouth move with the words and all that, so you didn't have to do that. Niggas don't care, bro. Snitches News started kicking it with people like FBG Duck. Wooski. And As you see, he pitching with Duck, Wooski, he pitching with some of the guys, like, he pitching with some of the real heathens, nigga. I be, J Main. First of all, he was, he was saying he was a BD from <coughs> Waste. He was saying he was a BD from somewhere else. He was like making some, I don't know. I, I forgot what he was saying he was BD from, but it's merged. He was just dirty, bro. And, and he had a, um. Hey, shout out to my nigga FYBJ Main. He locked up, man. Free it's FYB. Man. Nigga said he was dirty. So it hit everyone. Um, buddy with the man's trenches news, he, he used to stink, bro. So I don't know if he still stank to this day. Nigga said he used to like stink. YouTube money now. The Ida B. Wells Homes. Nigga, you just walk around stinking? Like, this alleged, though. This is what J. Main said. I don't know trenches news. This shit could be cat, but nigga, if you just walk around stinking, booty, come on, gang. Also comprised the Clarence Darrow Homes and Madden Park Homes was a Chicago Housing Authority public housing project located in the heart of the Bronzeville neighborhood on the south side of Chicago. It was bordered by 35th Street to the north, Pershing Road, 39th Street to the south, Cottage Grove Avenue to the east, 
and Martin Luther King Drive to the west. The Madden Park Homes, where Snitch's news comes from, were the last public housing project built in the city of Chicago. He just casually calling nigga Snitch's news. You better have some proof that this nigga is a truth teller or a rat or a snitch by the end of this video. You just casually calling him that. It was completed in 1970. In the 1980s and 1990s, the Madden Park projects became heavily infested with gang activity and drug addicts inhabited the buildings. Massive gang wars erupted between gangster disciples and black pea stones in and around these housing projects as the gangster disciples fought for complete control of the drug trade. Security guards were even targeted, which resulted in a guard getting mowed down by automatic gun fire in a security booth in 1988. In 1994, a major group of gangster <coughs> disciples switched gangs, becoming black disciples, which caused the gang wars. <coughs> That's why you see a lot of... <coughs> I don't know too much about GDs and BDs, bro. I'm not from Chicago. I'm from the Bronx. But I do rock with Chicago, so I be covering the news and all that. Bro, that's why you see a lot of these people be like, oh, yeah, I'm BD, but I'm BDK. I be like, how the fuck do that make sense, nigga? How you K your own gang? Like, how do your big homie feel about that? How do your OGs feel about that? Like, how do the higher ups of this shit feel about that? Like, you saying you GD, but you GDK, and you or you BD, but you BDK? That shit is crazy to me. Like, you're not going to hear a nigga say, I'm blood, but I'm blood K. You're not going to never hear that, at least not in New York. Increase in intensity as GDs and BDs fought viciously all around the housing complex. In the year 1999, the project buildings began demolition until 2005, when the last buildings were torn down and Snitch's News needed a new home. In 2006 or 2007, Snitch's News moved into Parkway Gardens. O Block! So he moved to O Block? So Trinch's News lived in O Block, okay. He's got stories about O.D. Perry, Chief Keef and King Von to tell. He's been telling stories on activities in O Block for a very long time. Just ask another blogger from Chicago, Truth Teller, about Snitch's News. I remember Trench's News before he was Trench's News. And look, Trench's News was like a source of man like seven, eight years ago. I tell people this shit. Like, Trench's News is to tell the truth. This shit been happening. Like, truth, you better report about this shit. This shit been happening. He used to tell me shit like this six, seven years ago before he was Trench's News. Snitches news. Oh, so he basically was more or less doing this whole report thing before he felt like he should get on the internet and do it himself. That might be why he wearing the mask. He probably I right, see, but this is this gets me to my next point. You probably feel don't you don't feel comfortable saying the stuff you saying online then. If you got to wear a mask to cover your face, to cover your identity, before you wasn't even going to make no YouTube, you was going to get information to somebody else and just let them. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, you're not comfortable with saying what you're saying, which means you probably shouldn't be saying it. You probably, like, niggas probably, you probably not the type of nigga to be talking like this if it was a group of niggas around. You probably the type of nigga that wouldn't be, be, even be, like, saying that you know these stories if niggas was around type shit. And that, that's what made me feel a little weird about the shit. It's like the TK Kirkland of the Chicago drill scene. He has a story about everything and everyone because he was everywhere. He can tell you where he was when the planes crashed into the Twin Towers on 9-11 and so can I because he was in jail. I'm sure there's a story behind his arrest for possession of weed in 2002. And even more entertaining tales. Damn, this nigga, nah, hold up. What year is that, bro? Somebody figure out this nigga age in the comments. Behind all of his arrests in 2003 and 2004. In 2005, there's a soliciting charge. I'm dying to know more about that. Soliciting charge. He also got popped for. So my son was buying booty. My son was definitely buying booty, nigga. In a gun. Snitch's News was arrested a few times in 2007 and 2008 when he claimed to live in O Block. But, none of his arrest reports reflect an address on King Drive. In September 2010, he was arrested for domestic- This nigga done been locked up mad times over the years though. Nigga look done changed wild times. Battery. Oh, nigga, be, nigga, be, nigga beating the shorty, nigga, bro. Domestic battery. So he beat one of his joints, man. 
This time his address reflected one. We don't respect that, nigga. Damn, but why you got you gonna go sit and go through the nigga whole arrest report? See, I didn't know what type of video this was gonna be. I didn't know if it was gonna be funny, entertaining. I mean, it's funny for y'all, because I'm here reacting to it. But like the entertain I, I it's entertaining because you're telling us facts about the man, but are we gonna go through this nigga whole background check, nigga? In O Block. But when he was arrested again a month later, his address changed to one in Jaro City. The murder of Reezy, also called Ra Ra, from Wick City, led to the fallout between the Beaties from Newtown and the Beaties from the Wick in August 2010. This is, obviously, before the murders of Tuca and OD in 2011. We'll let Snitch's news tell his story, and then we'll return for a look at the arrest reports to dispel the rumor that FBG Wooski had anything to do with Reezy's murder. The situation was that Ra Ra brother I had grabbed one of the folks' wife ass. You know what I'm talking about? He palmed it. He ain't just smack it. He palmed What? Grabbed one of the folks' wife ass, palmed it. Oh, yeah. Nah, you, you want to die. Or you want to get really, really hurt really, really bad. Nigga, the guy's not even going to allow that. Because you noticed the homie bitch. Nigga, what is you doing? You know, she got a little fat one. You know, actually, it's um look look Mikey Ike's sister who he grabbed ass. Mikey Ike's sister, my my homie married to Mikey Ike's sister who be with Lil Dirt. Ike Mikey, whatever y'all call him, I call him Lil Mikey. He got a twin. So he be with Lil Dirt though. So um he palmed the ass. So she her little brother now went around, little twins now went around. So she had um called one of the little guys from Newtown. He a drunk, skinny, weigh a hundred pounds. Rob Rob brother. Six six one six two, probably about one one seventy five one eighty. Man, my homie Lil Rad knocked him clean out. Boom, man, you, you said. Why would she go get a little nigga to go? Why would she go get a little nigga? Go get the hitters. A disrespectful six two six something nigga just palmed your cheeks, just palmed your yeekage. Go get the hitters. Touched up. You touched my own sister in law. Yeah, I touched her. What you gonna do, nigga? This our block. Wow. Wiped him out with one punch. Damn. He fall out right in the gates when you come across the street by White White them crib, by Bond them crib. He fell out. So, motherfucker, wake him up. Being polite, wake him up. Folks now woke him up. Hey, bro, you tweaking, bro. We all the guys. He man, y'all jumped on me. Get back. He run down to the other. Nigga said, man, y'all jumped on me. Get back. Nigga, no. Ain't nobody jump on you, nigga. One nigga did that. One nigga hands did that, nigga. It was not a group effort. No, nigga, not a group project. He did that solo. Yeah. He grabbed, he tell his brother Ra Ra a lot, because Ra Ra wouldn't have never went for it. So he tell Ra Ra a lot that Newtown just jumped on him. Newtown Field Boy just jumped on him. They come down now with 15 pipes, 15 niggas. Everybody got pipes out. We tired of y'all niggas. One, nobody trying to hear the story. And this is how Newtown end up getting its old parkway because of that. So, one, well, nobody trying to hear the story. So, it's like Newtown, it was like, bro, some brave hard shit, bro. Some, some, some meeting up. Um, some 1917, 76 type shit. George Washington, them type shit. Like, it's old block, the whole old block parkway. Not eat all of them. They weren't involved with that shit. Not Trey Fire them. They was gone. They walked off. So, it was just the big guys, all they big guys. They was on one side, and we was on the other side. And Ill, and his, um, I think that's his brother or his friend, his homie, whatever. He used to be with Rod Rod them all the time. I don't know if that's his real brother or his fake brother, but he ended up doing a dub for the, for the shit that happened. So Shorty got the gun. We used to call him Trigger Happy Will, bro. He used to be running around Parkway just wouldn't shoot. He was a trigger happy motherfucker like anything that happened. You always got one of them niggas, man. You always got one of them trigger happy niggas in the clique. Like, that nigga always want the gun. He always want to shoot. He always like, that's not a hot. That nigga got it. Nah, fuck that. I skip this. There's always one of them niggas. You know what I'm saying? That's just over willing. Like, overdoing it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, sometimes you need that nigga. Like, yeah, I right, go ahead and take care of that nigga. But other times, like, yo, my nigga, relax. Like, get this nigga on the goddamn, you know what I'm saying? What's the shit? The, the leash, nigga. You got to get your fucking pit bull on the leash, gang. He blowing. According to arrest reports, Ill Will is Willie Sally, also called Lil Will, from Parkway Gardens. Trench's news didn't say his name, but Faux Enum, that busted shots from the Newtown side, was their leader, Cashel Williams. One, 
of the stories told to investigators, is the same one told by, Snitches News. Basically, there was a confrontation with an unnamed female, and some nigga from New Town, that led to Ra Ra's brother, getting beat up. His brother wakes a sleeping Ra Ra up. How we feel about the anime voice saying nigga? How we feel about that? To confront the New Town beaties, and Ra Ra is accidentally killed, by his friend, Lil Will. Remember, I said Snitch's news, story, matches the statements told by one of the witnesses. But, there are other conflicting statements out there. Another story is, Cashel Williams, was aiming at Lil Will, but hit Ra Ra instead. After Lil Will's arrest for the murder, he claimed that he was at his girlfriend's house, and didn't shoot a gun. His girlfriend, on the other hand, told a totally different story to the police. Lil Will, then changed his story. He later claimed that he shot Ra Ra in self-defense because Ra Ra was running at him with a gun. Whatever happened, happened, and the end result was, BDs from New Town that migrated to Parkway Gardens, after the buildings were demolished, like Snitch's News, were no longer welcome on 64th and King Drive. In 2011, the gang war between Wick City and SDLEBT intensified when Tukaville was created with the murder of Sean Dam. Who the fuck is this little nigga that just popped in the video, bruh? This little nigga came out of nowhere. In 2011, the gang war between Wick City and SDLEBT intensified. Why is this toddler here telling us a gang violence story? Why do you got a, a, a goddamn toddler telling us a gang violence story, my nigga? In a toddler voice, too. Tukaville was created with the murder of Shondale, Tuka Gregory, and O'Block was formed after the murder of O.D. Perry. 2011 also marked the year that Patoon from O'Block was murdered and the year that Chief Keefe burst onto the music scene with his first single, Bang. Bang. In 2012, King Vaughn would begin his murder spree. In October, he killed his arch enemy, Modell McCambry. Snitch's news Allegedly. has a lot of stories from this time period. One that he likes to tell a lot is where he personally escorted E Dog around Jaro City during the height of the war, hoping to initiate peace talks. Let Snitch's news tell it. He was an OG, a neutral observer that wanted nothing but the best, for both sides. The truth, of course, is a lot more complicated. Before his death, the feds were investigating King Vaughn, in an attempt to charge him with, conspiracy, in what would eventually develop into, the O'Block Rico case. Federal agents were investigating the murder of FBG Duck, and all of the murders, allegedly committed by King Vaughn, R.I.P. both of them guys, man. King Vaughn and FBG Duck. I like both of them, bro. The murder of Modell McCambry in October 2012. I looked again. I see T. Roy J. Money. I walked across the street once I seen T. Roy J. Money. Vaughn was in the cut too with the when 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 I got when I got across the street and Waffle like, what's up, what's up? Tell man, where them niggas at, man? Ooh. Nah, where them niggas at, man? You be with them niggas. What up? What up? Nigga, don't try to talk about you don't know where niggas is at. None of that. You be with them, nigga. Where they at? I'm like, man, look, man, man. I don't play that type of shit. I'm grown. I, I, I don't know where they at. Even though, you know, I knew where they was because I just left out the crib. But it ain't about being loyalty or nothing. That, that's your fish. You go and catch your fish if you want. Like, hey, they go and catch their fish. I ain't back doing them. Don't walk that way. They that way. 
I told y'all I was driving through the blocks, but I did tell Modell now, did warn them. This nigga voice is annoying as shit. And his voice do not match his face. Then watch out, man. You hear me? They walked across 63rd. I kept it moving. Remember what I Now that we finally can see what the nigga Trench's news look like, nigga, voice do not match the face at all. That's what When I get to like, I ain't gonna lie, when I get to like 60 seconds, like 60 seconds in Champagne, bro, that's when all the shots went off. That's when the shots went off. Boom, 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 boom. It went something like I just peep he got the nigga Trenches news in the courtroom. I just peeped that, bro. I'm I gotta be high, bro. I just peeped that he got the nigga in the courtroom testifying. Look, bro, it's a courtroom, nigga. Look, that's crazy. During this time, Snitch's news is not the innocent bystander to the gang war that he would like everyone to believe. He chose a side. In May 2013. He wrote, fuck the wick, fuck the bricks. Trenches news, clout swiper? Oh, wow. These some old tweets, nigga. What's the date of this? 5 4 13. Wow. 2013. Fuck Lamron. <coughs> and fuck 4 6. <coughs> Damn. Okay. <coughs> it says 4 6, nigga. Tell us how you really feel, Snitches News. In September 2013, he tweeted, if you kill Dirk and Reese, that's a first 48. In October 2013, he wrote, By the way, Lil Homie, I'm the only BD with a gang. No insane? Straight 2414, but I only hang with villains. What the F is a front street? What's up with these 2011 BDs? I will never lock the gates with you foo foo ass niggas. FPG out now. Put in some work. Didn't holla at me, my niggas. Die 600. And he replied to a tweet from Lil Nah, he was talking that spicy shit. Trish's news was with this shit, okay? Okay, swipe. With, on no block. Pissing where Platoon got killed. LOL. All of this goes to prove that Snitch's news was in the Martin Luther King of the Chicago streets, preaching love and peace. He was a street nigga. Trying to help his team get some legal money in the music industry. Say so he was a street nigga. Like, yo, how you got this little kid talking like this, bro? There's nothing wrong with that. Just don't rewrite history. Snitch's News likes to brag that he was the first person to get FBG Duck's music played on the radio. In 2013, he wrote, I won't stop till FBG at the top. GB, belong in the garbage or trash can. In the year 2014, Snitch's <coughs> News would get arrested with his Clout Boys Entertainment shirt on and claim he was present at another one of King Vaughn's murders. Butter, Tay and Cray Cray. They, um, Cray Cray and Butter, Cray Cray and Tay was shooting dice. Uh, I'm telling you from the end before the killers popped out. Um, Butter was sitting on a gate that was enclosed. So Butter, it was nowhere in the hell that when they popped out to kill Tay it was nowhere in the hell Butter went through that gate. Butter jumped over that gate and left him on everything. He jumped over that gate and left him. That was the last time Butter seen K.I. when he jumped over that gate. So don't tell me y'all went that way. Okay? When I turn and look, as we come down, I'm turning and look. You know how you look and pay attention to everything? Bro, they in the cut, bro. It ain't no building too far along from them. They in the cut with like, it's like a building, and then it's a space in the cut. You can see right through it. Hey, look. Vaughn, Big A, and Troy on T. Roy on their thing, bro. They was in that cut on their thing. They was in that cut. And Butter know it was Vaughn, man. I'm so T. Roy and Vaughn and Big Eight. Are you trying to? They always did for the for the chaos situation, but I think Vaughn was the only nigga still living. Put on all this facade and all this. Vaughn and gave him some money and paid him in jail and all this. Yeah, he probably did give him some money, so he gonna tell on his ass on their thing. But Butter, a person who was out there with Butter, then already told, and this is public record. This came out on Reddit that Krayshawn, uh, the one who he said Cray Cray, Tyler, Chris and Snoop, which K.I. was Snoop and he was Cray Cray, uh, he already told the people in jail when they came and seen him, bro, at Stateville. He, they, he already told that King Barnes the one who killed Ja'Kyra Barnes, man. Okay, 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 okay. So, <coughs> everybody was trying to say that it was Butter. Everybody was trying to say it was Butter that told because that Butter was the only one that was there. He, 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 the, the person who telling is speaking from the uh, account like of they was getting bust at too. 
So it was another nigga. I'm not saying it's not butter. I'm just saying that definitely clears that up, though. If you've enjoyed our program so far, please like this video. And so Facts, though. Make sure you like the video. I need the likes. Like the video if you hear my boys. Subscribe. And subscribe if you're new. Our channel. In 2015, Snitches News would get shot in the head, but survived. This is the second time that there was an attempt on his life during a robbery that ended with him surviving a a headshot wound. In 2004, he was in the process of earning his associate's degree when he was attacked by unknown assailants. After Damn, my son was out here trying to get his education. My son was trying to get his education. Niggas trying to take his top off. He's trying to grow his brain and niggas trying to like take his brain out of his cranium. Like, that's wild. Picking up a pizza from Italian Fiesta on the 1900 block of East 71st Street. After recovering from injuries suffered during a shooting a second time, he was arrested again, in 2016, for domestic abuse. So, the domestic abuser, spent the years 2017, 2018, and a lot of 2019, in jail. In 2020- He did three years for domestic violence? Bro, three years, bro? How bad did you beat that girl, bro? What did you do to her now? We need to hear more. We need to break that story down. That's crazy. He started his popular YouTube channel. Of course, he attracted the attention of the FBI by placing himself at the scene of murders committed by King Von during their investigation into the bounty placed on FBG Duck's head. We call him Snitch's News because he is a snitch by his own definition and street rules. The feds are building a RICO case against the BDs from O Block. They need to establish that, a block, is a criminal organization, like the Italian Mafia. Cooperator 1, may testify at trial that he was a black disciple, initiated through the Newtown faction, but lived in Parkway Gardens, from 2006, or 2007 to 2011, and that a block members held meetings, where, $20 in dues were collected. So, to sum things up, Snitches News, Twenty dollars in dues? That's how much niggas is paying dues? Okay. I guess it's affordable. You know what I'm saying? I guess you know what I'm saying. It's hard out here in these streets, man. Twenty dollars. You know what I mean? Pull up with twenty, and you good. But we don't know that he is cooperator. We don't know that he's that cooperator. So you just saying this? It's a ledge. I feel like. Testify that O'Block was, in fact, a criminal organization that held meetings and collected dues. Muop's lawyers filed a motion in limine to exclude the testimony of Snitches News, who is identified by his initials, M.W., for Martel Wiley, and others. Oh, nah, that is a crazy coincidence. Nah, okay, maybe, maybe it's, alleged. I'm gonna say allegedly, but maybe it's real. Muop's lawyers argue, although the details have not yet been provided to the defense, it appears that, M.W., has been paid for the information in this case. Federal investigators also showed Snitch's News, a collection of surveillance footage, obtained by the police on the day that FPG Duck was killed, called the Camtasia video. Paid informant, Snitch's News, identified Marcus Smart, better known as Muwap, at the 2 minute 51 seconds mark, and the 4 minute 28 seconds mark of the Camtasia video. Nah, bro. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. This is crazy. It's your initials, nigga. You pointing shit out. You s nah, bro. This last time he going over. If you read that article, all that shit is is them asking me questions, and they asking me questions because they trying to get to the point where Kenny Mac. What? Nah, bro. You you pointing people out at this, bro. I ain't even going. I ain't even gotta say the rest, nigga. Y'all know if that's true, nigga. That's crazy. That's snitching. That's wild, nigga. If that's true, that really is snitches news. I ain't gonna lie. If that's true, if that's whatever that we just read is official documents, that is snitches news, man. Jimmy Gang, I'm off this nasty. I'll see you in the next one, man. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video. We reporting to you straight out of the Bronx, my boys. I'm gone. I'll see you in the next one, man.